These are ballpoint pen drawings. And if you really want to know about the industry of war, read a book by Major General Smedley Butler called War is a Racket. He says, our boys were sent off to die with beautiful ideals painted in front of them. No one told them that dollars and cents were the real reason they were marching off to kill and die. I was a graduate student at the University of Iowa when I was deployed to Iraq with the Iowa National Guard in 2003. I was a combat medic, but also did a lot of work outside of the wire. I joined the military because I felt I had to. And I wish somebody would have told me the things that my family members went through before I went overseas. My great uncle was gassed in France. His brother was shot through his legs in Tarawa in the Second World War. Their other brother was sunk at Pearl Harbor and again in the South Pacific. My grandfather's on the right. He was an ambulance driver in New Guinea in the Second World War. The far left is my uncle who was a helicopter mechanic in Vietnam. And I'm on the far left. I was an ambulance driver, assistant squad leader, emergency medicine NCO. And the tall guy is a uh, guy who took me in when I was having a pretty hard time. And the guy on the right is her friend Willie Hurd that overdosed on heroin two years ago. I wasn't and we weren't issued the sappy plates, small arms protective inserts made out of clay that would actually stop bullets until right before we came home. Here's some pots I saw outside of a Christian orphanage near Al Kush in northern Iraq. The priests or monks were fermenting wine for service. Picture on the left I took from the back of a, a Humvee with a machine gun at a children's hospital. We would deliver medical supplies to it. And across the, the horizon line is the berm to the ruins of the ancient city of Nineveh. And so art history had a practical application for me here. And then uh, I got to the Metropolitan Museum of Art a couple years later to get the other photo. So when I just got back from Iraq, I rode my motorcycle to Flagstaff to see a concert with my friend Brian Harper. But really, I got to fire the Tozan Naborogama with Don Bendel. And over a week at Graveyard Shift, the stories I heard about Yukio, who was a Japanese kamikaze pilot that built the kiln 40 years after the war ended, and then I was firing 20, 20 or 19 years after they built it. And it was really important. Um, Bendel was a Navy veteran. My undergrad professor, Mike Weber, uh, this is his place and pieces I made after I was at Flagstaff. The time and the place and the community to kind of be able to lose it in not a good way, but to make art and fire kilns was really important. The Abu Ghraib pictures came out right around this time, and so the, the imagery, the form, and, and what it meant to me is capturing the essence of what war does to people, not you know r right or wrong, but kind of cutting through that is why it's an image I continue to use. And I also had friends that know the people, they were medics at this site that know the people in the photographs by name. And some big sculptures that I was trying to, the ones on the left, in the center, think about my friends that were overseas while I was in the studio and I wore a necklace while I was deployed that had the Albrecht Durer hands and it said pray for peace and I thought it was tongue in cheek, kind of funny, but it's not, I'm using it in the original application here. Sappy plate that I made, Smedley Butler, um, kind of putting myself in the figure being tortured and leading into a veteran crisis line card that I carry with me that I actually called and probably saved my life. And kind of the my overarching political views there of both sides continually making people say whoops. Had the great opportunity to go to the LH project for a veteran residency. 
sculpture that I made back to further explaining being pissed about not having some pretty cheap equipment that'd save your life. Uh, suicide hotlines on the other side. And that time in the studio at LH, here's a another or a shot of the studio is really important because I was pretty pretty low and not having access to a studio at all. And so this opportunity really the time being with other people that had a shared experience was just crucial to to continue to be working in clay. Lately I've been making a lot of crocs with literal and metaphorical imagery on it. Myself, self-portrait there with various aspects of my military service and then ways that I've worked it out or attempted to. VA pill bottles for sleeping, depression, anxiety, night terrors, impotency, and the Magritte pipe is is using his kind of intent, but that trying to show a real depiction of what war is. Another self-portrait, suicide hotline on the left, VA card on the right, off a case of Budweiser, Lady Liberty holding the torch, freedom, pushing back the frontiers of freedom, drinking beer, with that imagery to help forget about the time that I spent in Iraq. And the Sailor Jerry, skull and rat, rats get fat while brave men die. Snoopy's chilling, he made it home, and then on the right, is myself as the sad pawn eight ball looking at Snoopy, but also keep seeing the ear that the smiley face guy saying, it's all good, get some cut off of uh, somebody. Cast paper rifles from my combat uniform, a Western Diamondback rattlesnake that I shot with Don Wright's 38 at the ranch when I was living and working there. Actual military litter stand, my aid bag that I carried that I had to kind of steal, I wasn't issued one, my combat boots, rug that went with me everywhere I slept, some cast bronze. Smedley Butler says, war is a racket. It is the only one international in scope. It is the only one in which the profits are reckoned in dollars and the losses in lives. <laughs>